Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. I welcome you all to a daily quiz for today. Let's begin with question number one on your screen. Consider the following statements with regards to the Institute of Eminence tag. Number one, in 2018, the Empowered Expert Committee, chaired by former Chief Election Commissioner N. Gopala Swami, recommended a list of institutions for consideration of the Institute of Eminence status. Second, to get the status, the institutions should be among the top 100 in the National Institution Ranking Framework or top 500 in internationally recognized rankings. Third, private institutions are not eligible for this tag. How many of these given statements are incorrect? Second and the third statements are actually wrong here. To get the status, institutes should be amongst top 50 and not 100 in the National Institution Ranking Framework, it is NIRF. Third is also wrong since private and government both institutions are eligible for this tag. So the answer here would be B. Two statements are wrong, only one, that is the first statement is correct. The reason why we are asking this question is because of this article in the Indian Express newspaper, according to which a house panel has told the central government that the government's procedure for granting this tag of Institute of Eminence should be accelerated. This is a report presented in the Rajya Sabha under which the panel has said that this scheme should be realigned with the national education policy of 2020. This article says that the government has informed the committee that so far eight public and four private institutions have been granted this status. The government of India has also sanctioned a lot of money under the scheme to ensure that the infrastructure of these institutes of eminence becomes even better. Next question number two. Consider the following statements with regards to National Mobile Monitoring System, NMMS number one. The National Mobile Monitoring System software app was launched by the Ministry of Rural Development in 2021. Second, the app permits taking real-time attendance of workers at Manarega work sites along with geo-tagged photographs. Third, the union government has made digitally capturing Manarega attendance universal from Jan 1, 2023 through this app. Which of these given statements is or are correct about this app? The correct answer would be D. All the three given statements here are correct. This is an app which has been made mandatory for the Manarega workers more specifically. Now remember, this is not just about their attendance tracking. It is also about tracking the progress of the project where they are working. Because there have been a lot of allegations that the Manarega workplaces don't give the kind of results that are expected. Although the money is given to the workers, but the infrastructure that is supposed to be built is not satisfactory. So to track its progress, the government of India has launched this NMMS scheme. This app that we are talking about was launched by the Ministry of Rural Development. As per the government, this is being rolled out in the entire country. As you can see the statement made here, the app has been made mandatory for all the Manrega workers from the 1st of January onwards. The worksite supervisors are responsible for capturing the attendance along with geotagged photographs of the workers through this app. The ministry has also trained states and territories to ensure a smooth transition to these apps so that the attendance capturing can be done easily. Next question number three. Consider the following statements with regards to delimitation exercise in India. Number one. The delimitation commission is appointed by the Prime Minister of India and works in collaboration with the Election Commission of India. Second, under Article 170, the Parliament enacts a delimitation act after every census. Third, the first delimitation commission exercise was carried out by delimitation commission with the help of the election commission in 1950-51. How many of these given statements are wrong? Now let's look at these statements one by one. The first is wrong because the delimitation commission is appointed by the President of India and not the Prime Minister. This I think was an easy statement to answer. Second is also wrong, Article 82 talks about the Parliament's power to enact the Delimitation Act. Article 170 also talks about delimitation but at the state level. Article 82 it is that talks about enacting the Delimitation Act after every census. Third statement also is wrong. So the first Delimitation Act came into being in 1952. Before that, the first delimitation had already been carried out in 1950-51. This was carried out by the President of India. So it was on the President's order that the first delimitation exercise was carried out with the help of the Election Commission because the Delimitation Act was first passed in 1952 only. 
So 1, 2 and 3, all the given statements here are wrong. The answer here has to be C. 1, 2, 3, all here are wrong. The reason why we're discussing this is because of this news. That is, the Chief Election Commissioner has made a statement that in Assam, delimitation and the NRC, that is National Register of Citizen Updation Process, can go on side by side. He has said that these are different issues and there is no legal bar on carrying both of them separately at the same time. The NRC and delimitation, he said, are different issues and we can conduct this at the same time. The article also says that using 2001 census as a basis of the exercise, the election commission was in line with the provisions of Article 170 of the Constitution. Article 170, as I said, talks about delimitation of constituencies within a particular state assembly as well. The existing boundaries will be changed only based on the census that comes in after 2026. Next question number four. Consider the following statement with regards to the UPI. Number one, it is an advanced version of IMPS, round the clock funds transfer service, to make cashless payments faster, easier, and smoother. Second, NPCI launched the UPI with 21 member banks in 2016. Third, NPCI, an umbrella organization for operating retail payments and settlement systems in India, is an initiative of the RBI and Indian Banks Association. Which of these given statements about the UPI is or are correct? The correct answer here is D. All the three given statements about the UPI are correct. The reason why we are discussing this question is because as per the NPCI, that is the National Payment Corporation of India, the authority behind the UPI, there may be an interchange fee of up to 1.1% applicable on merchant UPI transactions that are done through prepaid payment instruments, wallets, cards, etc. from the 1st of April. The charge may be levied on UPI payments of 2000 or more than that. However, on some categories, it may be lower than that. So far as you know, UPI did not attract any charge whatsoever. From now onwards, it may start charging for those transactions which are merchant based and which are above 2000 rupees. Next is the previous year question from 2017. Consider the following pairs of traditions and communities and tell us which of these are correctly matched. Chaliha Sahib Festival, the Sindhis, Nanda Raj Jat Yatra, the Gons, Vari Varkari, Santhals. It's a difficult question to answer because these are not usually the things that you read in art and culture. The correct answer here is A. One only is correctly matched, the second and third are not correctly matched. The Nanda Raj Jat Yatra is actually a Nanda Devi related festival in Uttarakhand and Gons do not live in Uttarakhand. Then, Vari Varkari, it's a pilgrimage of the Varkari sect, again related to the Pandharpur god Vithoba in Maharashtra. That again is a part of the Bhakti movement and not really related to any particular tribal group. The first one was correct, the Chaliha Sahib, the Sindhi festival that is considered as a devotion to Jhule Lal. That is why first statement is correct, the first one is correctly matched up, second and third are not. Next is the fact of the day and today we want to discuss about a sect that is not really discussed in India very often. That is the Daudi Bohras. The Daudi Bohras are a small but wealthy community of Ismaili Shias that are mainly living in Maharashtra and Gujarat. Now basically the reason why this topic is in the news is because there is a petition in the Bombay High Court about who will be the next leader of the Daudi Bohras. This case has been going on for over 8 years about the succession of the leadership. As per the Daudi Bora faith, the Al Dai Al Mutlak is a representative of Fatimid Imam who has been given the role of leading the entire community in both secular and religious affairs. Thus, succession to the office of Sayyidna is through divine inspiration. Do remember, the title by which the supreme leader of the Daudi Bohras is known is Al Dai Al Mutlak. In simple terms, the battle is between uncle and the nephew. So, after the passing away of late Sayyidna, that is Muhammad Baruddin, this is a battle going on between his brother and his son. So, Khuzaima Kutubuddin, who is a half brother of the late Sayyidna, he has challenged the elevation of the son of 
Burhanuddin saying that I should be the one who should go to this post now as a leadership of the Daudi Bohras. However, the High Court has been hearing this matter for a long, long time now since Jan 2014. The matter is likely to be concluded in about a month or so. The important part for us to remember is that the Daudi Bohra community has about 10 lakh members all around the world, half of whom live in India. They historically have been known to be indulging in trading, they are entrepreneurs and business persons as well. The Al Dai Al Mutlak, that is the seat of the leader, is considered to be in Mumbai. Rather than following the individual's names, it is important for us from the examination point of view to read a bit about the Daudi Bora community specifically. This is it for today's daily quiz video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day ahead. Jai Hind.